This is a quick technical training video on how to migrate your configuration from your old Sonic wall, like a TZ300 for instance, and move it to a brand new Gen 7 firewall like a TZ670 I have here. So I'll show two different ways of doing it. My favorite way and preferred way is to redo the config. I'll explain all the different reasons why I want to do it, but in short, I'm sure the current firewall you have has its config for a very long time and you've been doing different migration of config, different network redesign, implementation of different services, and you've done plenty of testing and you have policies in there that are called test. They've been there for three years or you are new in this company, you've never done that configuration, you haven't done the configuration of the current firewall, you have no clue what's in there, you know, it's a good time to redo the config. Because if you think about it, how many times will you be able to get your TZ670 in your hand like this? And no one is going to complain. It's going to happen twice. Today, because you just bought it, you just received the firewall and it's the old one that is still in production. So that's the first time you can have the firewall in your hand for days or weeks without anyone complaining. And the second time and last time in the life of the unit, it's going to be when you retire it or change it for a much more powerful like a NSA 4700 because you quadruple the size of your organization, then you retire the old ones. So that's the second and only time you will have the firewall in your hand. So how many times will you be able to redo the config? Well, once. Now is the time, right? And the second option is to use the configuration migration tool. So if you've recently redone your config, you know it is really clean, it's perfect, you've constantly review your access rule and the different security mechanism you've set in there, you review everything and you know for a fact it is really good, then go for it, use the configuration migration tool. It's going to be taking more time to take the firewall and put it into your network cabinet than it is to migrate the config over. It is a really great tool, so I'll show you both. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the link to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's poke around with some units. Okay, so I will start with redoing your config from scratch. I'm pretty sure you guys laugh when I said you don't know what's the config in there. You have temporary policies that have been there for a decade. I'm sure it is the case of many, many people. Maybe not a decade, but years for sure. So you will all agree with me. Yes, it is a good thing to redo your config. So if you have a small organization, not too many uh, policies or objects or things like this, yeah, sure, go do it from scratch. It'll take you a few hours and you'll be done and you'll be sure that everything is as you want it, right? You will have full knowledge of what you've done. It's going to be a really good config. It's the time to do it, right? It's not going to be in three months from now when the firewall will be in production that you will have the time to redo your config and tell everyone in the organization, hey, uh, we're going offline for three weeks while I redo the config, right? Not going to happen. So now is the time to redo it. Um, if you, many times I hear people saying, well, I have quite a large organization. I must have like 200 address object in my firewall, right? I don't feel like redoing them and I get the point. And to me, the big warning, the big problem I see is not the willingness or of taking the time to do it, but the amount of errors you may do in the process, right? If you ask me to do to redo three, 200 address objects, you probably have 20, 30 errors in there. So not a good thing. So one thing I want to show you now is to use the command line interface to extract the custom address object you have. And again, use uh, command line to throw them back in the new firewall. So that way you have two, if you have 200 custom address object you've created, then off you go. They are in the new firewall within minutes and no typos were made. Be careful, as you can see, as you will see in uh, the process where, where I extract the address object and throw them back in a new firewall, the zone has to be mentioned, right? You say this address object in this is into this zone. So that means that you need to redo your zones before dumping the custom address object. So let's look at this. Okay, first thing, we will open PuTTY 
And here I'll show you roughly what you need to do to save the output of putty into a file. So make sure you did what I just showed roughly, otherwise you can Google it, you'll find it pretty easily. So now I'm connecting SSH into the old firewall, login as admin and whatever my password was. And now I'm gonna do show address object custom so it only shows me the custom address object that I have, all the one that I've created. And then you hit space, 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 space many times so it shows you everything and you exit. Then you open the output file and as you can see it is the exact output you add from putty uh, when you uh, issue commands in it. Next, please make sure you remove all the more that you have there because I haven't tried, but I'm pretty sure the firewall will not accept that weird command. And because here I already have migrated my config from my TZ400 to the 470 using the configuration migration tool, which you'll see the recording in a second, what I will do, I will only take two address objects and change their name to add test and change the IP address. But in your case, I would advise you filter the address object you need and select them all. So you do a copy and you, what we will do is to paste them into the new firewall. So here I connect SSH in my TC470. I do config T and I paste all of the, um, the line I have for my text file. So then I exit, it asks me if I want to save. I say, yes, please do save those things. And now we'll log in into the web interface of my new firewall. And we will see that for now, the address object are not showing. I filtered for tests. I will just hit refresh because I was connected before. And as you can see, both address object are here. So it's a great way if you do have hundreds of address object, you don't want to copy them. You can simply use that uh, mechanism in command line to extract specific information, cut and paste it into the new firewall. So that was one example on how to redo address object. You can use it with uh, address groups as well, but please don't lie to yourself saying, yep, I have redone the config from scratch. I just cut and paste all the address object, all the address group, all the access rule, all the NAT policies. You know, if you just recut and paste absolutely everything, you're just lying to yourself, believing that you've redone your config, but you just copy and paste everything. So what I would advise is, you know, take the, ad the custom address object, check which one you need. And if there are some you don't need, well, don't port over useless stuff in your new config, right? Moving on to the next topic, which is to use the configuration migration tool. So again, if you have a Gen 6 firewall like a TZ300 and you're moving to the 670, for instance, the configuration migration tool is great. But again, make sure you use it if you have a clean config, right? Because if you have a config that is a total mess, that you have things you don't need and stuff you probably have no clue what it is, and you migrate everything, it's gonna work, but it's still gonna be the same messy config that you add, but in the new firewall. So not really the best thing in my opinion, right? Because if you have the worst config ever, you may have the best firewall in the world with the worst config, it's not gonna work. The config has to be strong for the firewall to be strong. Same thing for every single product on the market, no matter what it is. So again, I personally advise you redo your config if you have no clue what's in there, if it's a mess and you have things you don't know what they're for, if you haven't done the initial configuration, take the time, redo it. Otherwise, just use the configuration migration tool that I will show right now. Before we start, I strongly suggest you look at the SonicWall configuration migration matrix, the knowledge base we have here. So as you can see, highlighted here, we have Sonic OS 6.5.1.3 is the minimum version supported. So if you have a TZ300 or any other TZ or NSA, you must at least have version 6.5.1.3 running or higher, of course. 
your existing software for global bandwidth management, virtual assist and content filter client enforcement cannot be migrated. So something to keep in mind as well. And another one noted here, Sonicwa setting import from Gen 6 and Gen 6 and a half is only supported through the migration tool to go to Gen 7. So it is important. You must use the configuration migration tool to go from your Gen 6 firewall to a Gen 7. You cannot import the EXP like you may have done in the past. Another important note here, if you are not running 6.5.1.3, you're running something older, you'll kind of need to first update from five, from 6.2 or 6.1 to uh, 6.5.1.3 or higher, and then you'll be able to export your configuration file and uh, use the config migration tool. As you can see here in the table, we have a Gen 6 TZ, the TZ300. And as you can see, TZ300 using the configuration migration tool can be exported in any type of Gen 7 firewall. So all the family, TZ family, the NSA family, and the NSSP family of SonicWall product. And next is to look at using the configuration migration tool. So again, if your config is really nice, you know it's great, you've done per you've personally done that config from scratch, you constantly review your access rule, trying to fine tune, always trying to make it better, more efficient, more secured, then yes, great, use the configuration migration tool. You got an awesome config. Great, to, great way to move to a new firewall, take that awesome config, migrate it to the new unit, and off you go. It will take you about a minute to simply get that new config uh, ready for the new firewall. So that is a great tool, which I will show how to do it right now. So here we are in our old firewall. In that case, it is a TZ400. So we go into the Manage menu. In firmware and backup, we can see it is running version 6543, which is good. We will export the configuration as a file, hit export, and you don't see it at the bottom, but it is downloading a exp file, which is the configuration of my old firewall. Next, go on Google, search for SonicWall configuration migration tool. I will put the link in the description box down below. But as you can see, you can do configuration migration from different models, Cisco, Checkpoint, Juniper, Polo Auto, Fortinet, WatchGuard, Sophos, and SonicWall. So select product here. We are migrating from a SonicWall. We'll hit browse, give it the config file we just downloaded, and hit upload. And as we can see, one firewall found, so it is happy. Next, we will pick our target firewall. In my case, it is a TZ470. But we can see we have every single models here. So, yep, 470W, that is my firewall. So here, as you can see, it is a great opportunity if you want to remap your interfaces, right? So if you like, oh yeah, on my old firewall X2, I would prefer it to be X5, then now is the time to change it. As you can see, I am just doing mapping one by one. Or if you don't want to go one by one, SonicWall has been kind enough to put a one-to-one -one mapping button at the bottom. <clears throat> so if you hit that button, it will map every, they will just keep the same, right? X0 will remain X0 and X3 will re remain X3 and so forth. See, that, that's amazing. Then you hit next, once you're happy, select the target version. 701 is the latest one, so that's the one I will pick. My firewall is not NHA, so I'm gonna uncheck this. And as you can see, it is downloading a new configuration file for my TZ270W for version 701. So next we'll go into MySonicWall and log in in uh, MySonicWall with my account. As you can see, my TZ470W is already registered. So in your case, if it's not already registered, please go forward and register that unit with the button all the way up here, register product. 
And if you don't know here, I'm just showing it quickly, but I'll put a link in the description box down below about the um, a video I've done on uh, how to get started first step with SonicWall, which shows how to, um, how to register a firewall. So next, go into Download Center and find uh, the TZ 470W that you want to go with and download the latest firmware because my own personal recommendation before importing your configuration in the firewall, ensure the firewall is running the latest firmware. So here we'll download the one that is the latest at the moment I'm filming. Next, we'll connect in the new firewall and by default, SonicWall firewall brand new, their IP is 192.168.168.168. So I'll log into my brand new firewall admin password. Configure manually. <clears throat> As you can see, the device is not registered. So we will go ahead and enter your MySonicWall credential. And by the way, ensure that the firewall has internet access. So make sure you have anything connected to X1 on the firewall, which give you uh, internet access. So it does not need to be a true internet. It could be your internal corporate network, as long as there is a path going to the internet for the firewall on X1. Okay, now my firewall has all its license including support, which will allow me to uh, put the latest firmware in it. So I'll go into firmware and settings. Then click on upload firmware. It asks you to back up your configuration, but we don't have any configuration yet. So we no need to back up nothing, right? So here we're going to give it the, conf the, um, the firmware we just downloaded and it upload. And with the magic of video editing, I will uh, cut some time here to move forward. And see, we do have now our second firmware. So we'll click on the power button here. And I personally prefer to uh, boot with factory default config. I understand the config we have is pretty much factory default, but I prefer the firmware to reboot with the latest firmware and without any configuration. So. It's a bit of a time consuming. You will need to re-register the firewall because it lost all its config, but I like to start my firewall with the latest firmware and no config whatsoever. And then I will import my configuration file in it. So here we'll let the firewall reboot. And again, with the magic of video editing, I will cut this part. And now the firewall rebooted with the latest firmware without any configuration. So it's still admin and password. We'll configure stuff manually. And as you can see, we do need to register the firewall. And again, you do need the firewall to have internet access for this to work. So type in your MySonicWall credential. and our license are here. So now we do have our firewall without any configuration. All it has its licensing and it also has the latest firmware. So now is the time to import the configuration file that we uh, created with the configuration migration tool. So we'll hit on import configuration, browse, and pick our TZ470W configuration file, the exp file and it on import. And we get this error because the firewall is currently rebooting. So we'll need to give it a minute, maybe time for you to go get the second coffee or a fifth one, up to you. But the firewall is currently rebooting. And of course you will, uh, you may lose connection with the firewall because first obviously it's rebooting, but when it's going to come back, it will have the configuration of your old firewall. So right now you're connected on X0. Well, it's going to be the X0 of your 
old firewall, right? With its current the, with the old config in there. So depending on what was the setting on X0, if you didn't add any DHCP server on X0, then you may feel that you're not able to communicate with the firewall because you didn't add a DHCP server on the firewall for X0, therefore you don't get an IP. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, you may have to connect to a different port depending on the configuration you add. So in my case, see, I received an IP in 10.6.254 dot zero slash 24 subnet because that's what I had configured in my firewall uh, previously. So now, of course, the new firewall keep the same settings. So now I'll be able to connect to that firewall with the IP uh, it's supposed to have based on the config of the old firewall. Thing to note here, the password is the old password. So as you can see, I've been tricked here. So it's not the old password. The password is not part of the configuration. So it is still admin and password. So I kept that on purpose in the video because I want you to be aware that you need to change the password on your uh, firewall. So you go into devices and administration. And as you can see, we have the default user and we can here change the password. So old password is password and put whatever new password you want. And it accept. And now you're good to go. So now it's time to unplug the firewall and put it into your rack and switch the firewall in my case from the TZ400 to the 470. So again, there are two ways to move from your Gen 6 firewall or previous generation firewall. The first one is redo your config from scratch. That is the that is what I personally recommend, especially if the config you have have been there for many years. Many people have poked around it. Many people did some test policies, not knowing really what they were doing, but everything start working with that test policy that allows everything. And the policy stays there because it works, right? So if that's where you are right now and you haven't even created that, that, that configuration initially, so it could be a total mess. So now is the time to redo it, to redo the config from scratch. So that's my personal recommendation. Of course, you could take that messy config and dump it into the configuration migration tool. It will migrate absolutely all the mess to the new firewall flawlessly. It's going to be great. But it's not gonna be the best config, right? I think we'll all agree. So that's the first option. If your config is kind of a mess or out of control, it's time to redo it. If not, if you have, if you're the one that created that config initially and you pay close attention to what's in there, review, tighten the config and things like this, you feel your configuration is very strong, then go for it. Use the configuration migration tool. It's going to be perfect. Migrate everything. So your firewall configuration migration will be done in 20 minutes, which 19 minutes will be about uh, taking the firewall out of the box, connecting cables, running the cable to do a clean job. And one minute will be about to dump the config in it. So that is a great tool. I love it. I've personally used it for my lab. I moved from a TZ470 to a, uh, from a TZ400 to a 470 and no one complained. The kid, the girlfriend, no one complained and at home. And I do have like 11 different networks and I have three VPNs. So I do have a lot of stuff and everything just works flawlessly. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.